abortion is now illegal. It's illegal. Amen? Praise God. And because of this, you got to understand something. That abortion, the offering of human blood to the powers of darkness, is what opens demonic dimensional ports. And also in that, you got to realize that the demonic forces get fed by the human bloodshed. So what has just happened is their food has just been cut off. Does everybody understand that? Their food has just been cut off. And now that their food has just been cut off, they're going to go crazy. Because they want their blood. You know, the sacrifice of human members, they drink blood and so forth. Amen. Well, Moloch was the deity, fallen angel deity, that promotes the sacrifice of children. Fifty years ago, this country approved abortion. Well, now we're in the year of Jubilee. It's been turned over. Fifty years ago, God turned his back on this country. And he let rule of the demonic forces take over. A country that was blessed became cursed. And we had all kind of morons take position in the political arena. All the Antichrist regime rulers, Obama, the Obamanites, amen. All of the, now you had Biden and the Clintons. All of these regimes of corruption took every position in place. They put their judges in and so forth. But there was something that happened when the Lord sent his trump into position. One of the first things he did was put 300 judges in because he knew what was going to happen. Because the Spirit of the Lord tells us things to come. So we're not on plan B. We're still on plan A. It's still being unfolded. But the first thing that had to happen is we had to starve our enemy. Does everybody get it? So now that we're starving the enemy, other things are going to begin to unfold. Because what's going to happen is confusion is going to come more in the enemy's camp. They're going to begin to destroy one another more and more and more. And as the praise and worship of God's children come up, he ambushes our enemies. Amen? Would you turn to hey guy? And you don't have to say hey guy. You can just say good morning. We'll do fine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Haggai chapter 2. In verse 6. This is a prophetic word. Everybody there? Let's speak for thus says the Lord of hosts. Once more, it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations. And I will fill this temple with glory. What temple is he talking about? Ours. Says the Lord of hosts, the silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. He says he's going to shake the heavens and the earth and all nations to expose their evil corruption and align my temples, my dwelling places of my people with my glory before I reset the silver and the gold. And release it into their hands. Does everybody understand that? We are in a time right now in a prophetic fulfillment. In the area where God is not only shaking everything. Because he's got to shake everything. Amen. You can go to Hebrews 12 in the meantime. And as he's shaking everything. He's exposing everything. He's trying to bring to the area of his children. To remove all things that are offensive to him. He's trying to bring us in this place where there's a full alignment with his will, 
with his purpose, with his word, and with his spirit. So we've got to have, it's time to realign. Everyone say time to realign. Because things got to realign before they can reset. Amen? Hallelujah. Hebrews 12, 25. Let's speak it. Say that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. That means the dimensional realms in heaven. Why? Because they hold seats and positions, spiritual seats also. What you see held physically is also held spiritually. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving the kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence, in godly fear for our God is a consuming fire again only the unshakables will remain in position to receive the glory and the wealth of those that are aligned with his will his purpose his word and his spirit again realigning is for the great reset without realigning there cannot be a reset and Matthew chapter 10 32 That's what, of course, we call this the burn. Everybody's in the burn, right? The world's in the burn. Burning up everything. We're in the burn. Burning up all the garbage. <clears throat> exposing our impurities. Our attachments to corruption. Our attachments to things that are unclean. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I did not come, what? To bring peace, but a what? A sword. That means he's looking for fighters. He said, I have come to set a man against his father, a, father, a daughter against his, her mother, a mother-in-law against her, uh, her daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. That's happening right now, isn't it? Look how many of your families are blue-pilled instead of red-pilled. Amen? They're blinded and can't see. In verse 37, he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will what? Will find it. How powerful. He said, I didn't come to bring peace but a sword to fight and cause what is unseen to become seen. There must be come, a, come a place of what we call a high level of denial of self so that we can fight and so that we can follow because you can't follow without a fight. If you're not a fighter, you can't follow. It's just impossible. And I'm talking about spiritual fight. You can fight physically and you can't win spiritually. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Let's speak it. Therefore, which means if you'll do this, if you'll what? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean. Can you touch something unclean in your thoughts? How about your hands? How about your emotions? Oh, how about your desires? Yeah. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. And I'll be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Chapter 7, verse 1. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness 
in the reverence or fear of God. Now, the fear of God is reverence, honor, and respect. Amen. See, too many are still unwilling to disconnect to the corruptible alignments and will miss the great opportunities that God has available, unable to reach a full realignment. You know, like, do you ever drive a car that has a bad front end alignment? You'd be driving a car, man, and go, man, this thing needs an alignment. Why? Because it's shaky. Everyone say shaky. People that are not fully aligned are shaky, man. And what does this shake do? It causes distractions. Distracted. They can't focus because they begin to focus on things that are shaky. Amen? And they finally realize, man, I need a front end alignment. Well, we need to be realigned with God's word, his presence, his will, his purposes. Everything that's not realigning with him is going to be exposed. And anything that's not, we're not willing to remove that a lot realigns us with him, we will miss opportunities because we're paying more attention to those things instead of him. Amen? Distractions are dangerous. Ephesians chapter 2. That's why you don't clap during worship. It's distracting. It's offensive. Somebody distracts me during worship, I don't like it. We want to stay focused. There's no time to clap. Time to worship. Your hands should be up surrendering. Clapping is the beginning when you worship and command demons to flee. Amen? Don't distract one another. Ephesians 2, verse 1. Let's speak it. And you, he what? He made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of what? Disobedience. Now, if you're disobedient, is that rebellious? And if you're rebellious, does it bring a curse? Well, snap, yeah. And does, what does a curse do? It allows demonic spirits to have access to people. And they wonder why they go go do goofy things. Or they go back, or they start over again in their trials and tribulations. The sons of disobedience, verse 3, among whom also we all once, once conducted ourselves in the lust of our what? Our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind or of the thoughts. And we're by nature children of what? Wrath, just as the other. So children of corruption. They are misaligned. One of the things they're misaligning with God's timing. God's timing. Amen? Not only God's will, but God's timing. If you're an anxious individual, you're misaligned. See, the enemy loves to push. The spirit leads in everything. The enemy pushes. The spirit leads. Now, sometimes we need a kick in the butt by the Holy Spirit. Amen? To say, come on, get back in line. Or he may warn you of something quickly. But the Holy Spirit always leads, not pushes. So what's happening right now is the voices of hell are attacking everyone. It's like every voice has been released. People are being tormented by the voices. Because they're attacking as much as they can right now. Remember, they're beginning to get hungry. And then they get fed by emotion. Amen. So your emotions, certain emotions will feed them. How about fear? Is it an emotion? Anger, hatred, bitterness, jealousies, outbursts. Of rage. All these are emotions. Lust, living under satanic torment, right? You know, addiction is lust. People don't realize that addiction is an overwhelming desire. Where did that desire come from? Not God. It came from his presence of a demon which has infiltrated the heart because the heart is the core of all desire. People are trying to get treated in addictions with medication, cross addiction. Remember the word spirit means what? Breath. People smoking and all kinds of, they got vape now. Oh, that's okay to do vape. We'll just vape out. It's an accursed item and it carries a demonic force in it. People will never be free until they're all disconnected and free. Amen? 
Hallelujah. So we were known, known as children of corruption, misaligned with God's will and timing. In Daniel chapter 7. Remember, the demonic forces are going to make an excuse for everything, for people to get corrupt again. The media promotes all corruption. Remember when this epidemic came down, and they closed down everything. They prevented people from going to church and all kinds of stuff. And the only thing they left open was the liquor stores. Hello, let's just promote more addiction. They knew exactly what they were doing. They were putting people under their control. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Daniel chapter 7, verse 21, please. Daniel 7, 21, let's speak it. I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them. Until the Ancient of Days came, and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High. And the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Hallelujah. That means the kingdom is going to be established to be possessed. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be dif different from all the other kingdoms. And shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from his kingdom, and another rise after them. He shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High. Shall persecute, that word persecute, <laughs> now listen to this, it means wear down. Wear down, everyone say wear down. He shall wear down the saints, what? Uh, his mouth. He shall persecute the saints or wear them down of the Most High and shall intend to change times and laws. Is that happening now? Amen. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and a half time. But the court shall be seated and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it forever. Then the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. This is the end of the account. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly troubled me, and my confidence changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. The kingdom must come to possess it. <laughs> Listen, the enemy... Even in the seals, it, it's coming against every area. You hear it. media releases a voice, doesn't it? Amen? Political seats release a voice. There's voices all over the place. And what he's saying, they're trying to wear us down to give in. That's why even though when, I don't know if you heard this or not, but uh, the decision of the um, abortion, the Pentagon rejected it. Well, what the heck's the Pentagon got anything to do with it? But they rejected the Supreme Court law. They outward just said, we reject that law. And many other places are rejecting that law. But many places now rejecting this president. In fact, Texas just said, no, he's not the president. And we're not going to accept any of his legislation, his mandates, or anything. So they sent 10,000. National Guard to their borders to protect the Im illegal immigration. And it's going to spread. It will become a domino effect. Once that, see, we got one state that has awakened. It will continue to awaken, 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 bring down. It will be a, a slow and then a fast, slow and fast process. But it is happening. And the kingdom of Christ will prevail over the whole world, the global event. This is a global event. Amen? So in this, we see that, you know, these, and even in the book of Revelation, the seals, when they're broke, everything is in, it's the beginning of something. 
It doesn't mean it's fully released. It's the beginning. It releases a certain time at God's timing. Every seal of revelation is a beginning process. The Word of God is three-dimensional. Again, to persecute is to wear out or wear down <laughs> by the motor mouth of demonic forces that weary many souls. We must maintain a position of heaven-bound. Amen? Not self-bound, heaven-bound. Not earthly-bound. Don't be concerned. Listen, we are living from the future to the present if you're heaven-bound. Amen? But the enemy will try to keep you stagnant in the me, myself, and I syndrome. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 18, Let's speak it. We know that whoever is born of God does not what? Sin. The word sin means presence of evil. Does not cooperate with the presence of evil. Doesn't mean we won't make mistakes. Amen. But he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. What does he do? He keeps himself sanctified unto the Lord. Separated to the Lord. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway, the influence, the deceptive powers of the wicked one. So we see that this is what's coming down right now. Remember, they just lost their food. So they'll attempt to do it. So this is why they're, they're going to try to promote war. They must have bloodshed. When the towers came down, there was a lot of bloodshed. They opened up a dimensional port. Their focus is to destroy mankind and depopulate so that they can rule certain areas. And we know that the Son of Man, the Son of God, has come and has given us an understanding. In other words, those in the world do not understand what you know. We have an understanding of what's going on. They don't. Now, many of the forces of darkness have an understanding of what's going on because they're promoting it. But they actually believe that they can beat God. That's pretty stupid, isn't it? <laughs> we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know Him who is true, and we are in Him who is true, in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from your idols. Again, the whole entire world system is under the control of the wicked one, the Nephilim race of fallen angels, demons, and sold out souls to satanic rituals for fame and fortune. But we have this understanding of the creator, his creation, and the reality and our identity. That is our understanding of who we are. Hebrews 12, verse 1. Let's speak it. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Are we going to need endurance during these times? Yeah. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become what? Weary and discouraged in your souls. That's what the enemy wants. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the correction or chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the father of spirits and live for they indeed for a few days chasten us as seemed best to them but he God almighty for our profit that we may be partakers 
of his holiness. Of course, no chasing or rebuking seems to be joyful at the, for the present or at the moment, but painful. Nevertheless, afterwards it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who've been trained by it. See, we are trained by our sufferings, aren't we? Amen? You're not trained in the mountaintops. You're trained in the valleys. Hallelujah. So we need endurance to overcome the continuous attacks of the voices, <laughs> making them the unseen voices and making them seen. Amen? We are warriors. We can allow the weariness and discouragement and oppression to have access to our souls. When we begin to sense these things, we must stand strong. But the Bible talks about a song of deliverance. Praise God. Take your sword out, your word, fight. Remember, the enemy's always trying to bring you back to your past and to your old self. And he can only attack you from your past because the enemy doesn't have a future. But you're living from the future to the present. Remember, chasing in his counsel, correction, and direction. It's for realigning, for protection, so that we fall into God's time and will. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the what? The excellence of the power may be of God and not us. We are what? Hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us and life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed and that I, therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all these things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not what? Lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is a, but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceedingly eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. We're hard-pressed. We can't lose heart. We can't grow weary. We can't be discouraged. Amen? In Psalm 37. We must have endurance. We must allow the Word of God to richly dwell within us. We must maintain assembling in fellowship. Psalm 37, verse 12. The wicked plots against the just and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is coming. Is his day coming? It started already. <laughs> the vengeance of the Lord is here. The wicked have drawn the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and the needy, to slay those who are upright conduct. Are you upright conduct? You're walking right with God, then the enemy's after you. He doesn't have to go after somebody that's already serving him. Amen. Hallelujah. He's drawn the sword and has bent the bow to cast down the poor and the need to slay those who are of upright conduct. Their sword shall enter their own heart and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. Praise be to God. <laughs> Let's go a little further. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be what? Forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. Are we in the evil time? And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. So no matter what you hear out there, things are going to get worse. 
There's going to be shortages all over the place, but we won't be short. We'll be tall. Amen? But the wicked shall perish in the enemies of the Lord, and the splendor of the metals shall vanish into smoke. They shall vanish away. <laughs> Again, the wicked plots all day long against the righteous, but it doesn't matter. The end result is victory. In Hebrews 2, We are entering a birth of a new era. We must get realigned. The Babylonian harlot will become dismantled for a time. Again, the food supply to satanic worshipers have been cut off. And Moloch is looking for volunteers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews 2, starting at verse 1, please. Therefore we must give the more what? Earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we what? Drift away. That also means distracted. Distracted. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect a great so great salvation, which at first <clears throat> began to be spoken by the Lord <clears throat> and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. For he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels, but one testified in a certain place saying, what is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you take care of him? You have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor, and set him over the works of your hands. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. He's, who's he talking about? Us. For in that, Jesus has been put in all subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor, that he, by grace of God, might taste death for every one. We're to avoid the drift of distractions, of selfish ambitions, fears, and lusts, false fulfillments, and maintain a real alignment with God's time, will, and purpose. 2 Thessalonians 3, and verse 6. Things that can bring a disalignment in our lives, we have to be careful of. Amen? In verse 6, but we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brethren who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition which he received from us. For yourselves know how you ought to follow us, for we were not disorderly among you, nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge, but worked with labor and toil night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you, not because we have not have authority but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us for even when we were with you we commanded you this if anyone will not work neither shall he eat but we hear that there are some who walk among you in disorderly manner not working at all but are busybodies now those who are such we command and exhort through our lord jesus christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread but as for you brethren do not grow weary in doing good. And if anyone does not obey our word in this epistle, note that person and do not keep company with them. And he may be ashamed. Yet do not count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Amen? So we got to be careful in all of these areas. Avoid disorderly brethren. They will become distractions to you and cause you to drift. First Thessalonians chapter 4. 
in verse 1. Let's speak it. Finally then, brethren, we urge you and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you've received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the whole Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Sanctification, your separation to him, that you should ab abstain from sexual immorality, that you should <clears throat> know how to possess your own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust. Hello. Not in what? Not in passion of lust. Hmm. Like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this manner, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarn you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Sanctification from the world of corruption. Maintaining an area where you are distanced from disobedience and rebellion. Now I'm going to close in Galatians 6, verse 7. says, do not be deceived, or what that means also is distracted, misled. For God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, he's going to what? He's going to reap. Now, thank God when you, get to get, when you begin to get back in realignment with God, God uses your reaping to train you. Amen? Verse 8, for he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit, will the Spirit reap everlasting life. Let us not grow what? Weary while doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart. That's the same thing. Amen? Don't lose heart. Don't give up. Don't be a wimp. Be a fighter. Don't be a wuss. Amen? Don't be a me, myself, and I -er. Maintain position, fight, learn. Let your trials and tribulations train you. Amen? Let the chastenings of the Lord strengthen you. For we all need endurance. Again, things are going to get worse out there, but they won't be for us. But it doesn't mean that we won't be more persecuted. Amen? We're going to be attacked. We'll be mocked. You know? But it's okay. We are armed and dangerous. We carry the presence of God and the sword of the Spirit. And in our pockets come a big Holy Ghost bazooka. Because we are more than conquerors. And if God is for us, who can be against us, right? So we must maintain the Word of God. We got to align with His presence, with His will, with His timing, and with His desires. Because everybody knows God's desires. Amen? Staying filled and reconnected all the time so that we can stay realigned. Why? Because without realignment, there cannot be a reset. And this is not only a global thing, but this is a personal thing, too. We must be realigned to fall into the full reset. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Again, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness in every area where we have fallen short, drifted, and become aligned with corruption. We ask that you correct us, direct us, and realign us so that we're in your perfect will, your perfect time, and your perfect purpose. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen.